Warhammer 40k Kill Team is a small skirmish combat game set in the 41st millennium where a small teams battle it out for dominance. And I had the pleasure to play in a Kill Team tournament in a local game store. And actually did quite well. Now, Kill Team is a 1v1 game between two squads of troops that battle on a small board and attempt to win by eliminating the other side or controlling objectives and scoring points. I'm not the best at explaining rules, so please don't expect to leave this video with the knowledge as to how to play Kill Team. I'll leave a playlist that does a really good job of explaining the rules in the description down below. But without any further ado, let's get into this Kill Team tournament. So, I was going into this tournament with the most basic knowledge of Kill Team, as I have played it in the past. I would be playing my Tyranid forces for the tournament. My roster consisted of two teams of three warriors, one team of five gene stealers, and one team of eight hormagons. And just a note, for a Tyranid kill team, I could only take two teams mentioned earlier for a whole game. This was my roster going into the tournament, but I did even use a second warrior squad and the hormagon team, as I couldn't see a game where it would be worth a switch for them. Also a little note, if you ever hear me talk about equipment, just know that every kill team gets 10 points to spend on equipment and i usually spend those points on giving my guys better armor saves then the day for the tournament came and i was as ready as i could be game one was against a guy named danny and his orc commandos we both weren't as experienced so it was a good first game for the tournament now i was going into this tournament with a team that hasn't really been updated since the launch of the second edition but so were Danny's orcs. The game was set up like this, with six objectives for us to claim and secure, which are represented by the dice to determine who controls them. The strategy I landed on was a flanking maneuver, as Danny tried to go for my leader over here, as if he killed him, he would earn points, which is why most of the orcs were positioned over there. But because Danny's forces were concentrated on my leader, I was able to go in and make a strike forward and kill his leader and a few other orcs giving me points for these secondaries, as well as claiming some more of his home objectives. There were some crazy moments in this game, like whenever I got into close combat with gene stealers and I kept on spiking my rolls and it was so good. I was playing gene stealers that had dual rending claws and this gave them a few buffs on their weapons. So they would get relentless, which let me reroll any failed hits and rending. So if I got a critical hit, which does more damage, I get to turn one of my normal hits into a critical hit so i could just farm damage with the gene sealers and it absolutely worked because orcs were disintegrating left and right just look at this look at these rolls good lord look at that look at that by this time i really realized the importance of gene sealer combat and movement gene sealers and kill team are each given a free dash that lets them move three inches and because the game is centered around each troop limited to two actions to commit, options were limited. And the same action couldn't be performed twice by the same model. So, if I shot with one of my guys, he can't shoot again until the next turn. But this free dash gives the gene sealers 3 inches to move without having to spend a point to commit a dash. But I could still dash. So the free dash, the paid dash, and the paid movement could let my gene sealers move 12 inches, which is considerably fast because we are playing on such a small board. So the gene stealers were able to go around and flank Danny's troops and steal objectives, whilst the warriors kept the other stuff occupied because they have so much health. For this game, I attempted to capitalize on the health of the warriors and the leader especially by paying equipment points on each to give them a reroll if I failed to save, which came in super clutch as Danny just couldn't kill my leader, which at one point had three to four orcs trying to bring him down and I just kept on rolling save and if i failed to save i would re-roll it and it would actually work with this strategy i won the game in a surprising 14 to 9 win for the tyranids and a strong start to the tournament game two was against the guy named juan and his felgor ravagers now juan was quite experienced at the game and actually taught me how to play kill team so i was a bit nervous the matchup of Tyranids versus Ravagers was going to be very interesting because we are both close combat based factions. Playing on Into the Dark Terrain, meaning everything and everyone was closely packed in together. 
We each deployed far away from each other and we were playing with capture the objective rules where the objective you stand on by the end of the turning point becomes yours until taken. Now I talked to Juan beforehand about his team and he also told me before the game started but his kill team is a gotcha team. When his operatives die, they don't, but instead become frenzied and can only be taken off the board if they kill someone or are hit by either two normal hits or a critical hit in either close combat or shooting. So it was going to be very tough because I had my 8 guys against his 10 and an extra life each. I took the same equipment as last time but I put it on the gene sailors instead because I figured they see more action. But the equipment was basically useless because it works against shooting but the type of board we're playing on really prevented shooting from happening. And because there are so many tight hallways and doors blocking line of sight as well as other terrain, my warriors couldn't even fire a single shot against the ravagers basically the whole time. I think if I took the equipment that gave my gene sealers health regen per kill may have been a bit better because the ravagers would want to get into close combat with the tough to fight and kill gene sealers and in turn the gene sealers could gain some health back if they killed the ravager. My thoughts on close combat were confirmed when Juan took his strongest close combat guy and charged him into a gene sealer which in turn killed his ravager and prevented it from going into a frenzy meaning that my gene stealer could at least take down one to two with them before dying. But there's a problem. My gene stealers only have nine wounds each, meaning that they are very weak and can be brought down from shooting and mortal wounds that would bypass their awful five plus save. I didn't think that would be too much of a problem because there wasn't much shooting as I said earlier. But well, Juan took one of his ravagers with a gotcha moment and charged him into two gene stealers. Not to fight, but to blow up, dealing mortal wounds, and he managed to get two detonations off and killed my two gene stealers on the left objective. From there, he rushed the warrior that was with them and overwhelmed the entire side. Things were looking bad, and I got all my troops together on one side to attempt to get into his side of the board. I also did this because one of my warriors was being targeted for one of his objectives. But from there, he just threw a guy one at a time into whichever of my models was ahead and would chip away at them until they would die. By the end of the second turning point, I think I had a half a warrior and a gene sealer left to his like five to six guys. So we called it there as there was no way I could catch up on points with my only two operatives. That was my first defeat at 10 to 16 points. A very close game, but the tankiness of the Ravagers and that one explosion basically decided the game. But I loved the matchup either way, especially because it was so quick due to the aggressiveness on the two teams and it was on such a cool board. My third game was against a guy named Trevor and his Drukari. Trevor, like Juan, also showed me how to play kill team. And in the store community, he is known as the kill team guy because of how many teams and how big into it he is. In fact, he along with the store manager helped orchestrate the whole event. So I was a bit nervous going into this. For this game, I wanted to get up close and personal as much as possible with the gene sealers in order to pick up the objectives because we were playing the secure mission again. I also wanted to try and prevent the Drukari from pushing up as much as possible. So I positioned the warriors in key points to rain fire on the enemy. The Drukari had a great advantage, however. When they shot, it That's did a, a lot, lot of damage. damage. How about a little more? Trevor had one unit with a very heavy weapon that could almost one shot one of my warriors. And it almost did, which was kind of scary. Trevor would also stack damage tokens on a few key units and bring them down even faster. But as my warriors would shoot with their good guns, they managed to kill a few Drakari here and there. And because I had less units than Trevor, the warriors could get another round of shooting off. See, in kill team, once all your operators have been activated and the other players still have some to activate, you can set some of your units with ranged weapons to overwatch, meaning that you could shoot again. It was really helpful as the warriors were usually able to kill or weaken a Drukari. But as Trevor lost a few more of his troops, he knew something had to be done. In his next few activations, he focused on putting damage tokens on the warriors. This would show his effectiveness as Trevor managed to bring down all my warriors with shooting, even with their extra save. This being the first time this tournament where all my warriors have died. But because Trevor focused heavily on bringing down the warriors, my gene stealers slipped past undamaged and were able to take most, if not all, the objectives. This focusing on the warriors would basically cost Trevor the game, as he couldn't get onto the objectives fast enough after I had secured them. I would just send my gene stealers to block their paths in melee if they did get close. 
and thus another victory with a score of 14 to 20 for my nids. Beautiful. Now, originally this tournament was meant to be a three round event, but me and another player named Ruben were actually tied for the podium. So we decided to run one more round and we got the secure mission again. Ruben was playing his Gene Stealer Colts team and off we went. Ruben had better shooting and more numbers than I did, but I had better melee than him. My main strategy for the whole game was to essentially sacrifice my warriors to the brunt of Ruben's attacks and to slowly move the gene stealers up forward from cover to cover to take each objective, taking advantage of the rule that prevents them from getting shot from any vantage point. Ruben also had a pretty strong strategy as well. He would have all his stronger firepower up front and have a bunch of neophyte hybrids in reserves to pop up and take the objectives. It was a constant back and forth as my gene stealers would take an objective, get shot off it, have it taken by neophytes, and then have another gene stealer shove them up. All my operators were each doing their part the best they could, and especially the warriors. As activation after activation, they were slowly chipped at by Ruben's ranged dudes. It was a neck and neck game as Ruben would implant my gene stealers to score more points while I had most of the objectives. It was looking bad as I got down to my last four gene stealers, but a miracle happened. I launched one gene stealer into Ruben's leader, and this gene stealer put all its might into this fight. This gene stealer managed to do something amazing. He brought down Ruben's leader and scored two of my remaining secondary. With that final kill, we managed to secure the game with the score of 19 to 21 for my nids, showing the cult who's daddy. Okay, that sounded super weird. But anyways, it was a super close game as Ruben and I had a fantastic time as there were countless cinematic moments throughout the game. With that game win, I secured third place in the tournament. That's right, a bronze medal baby, let's go!